I'd like to call to order the Thursday, June 7, 2012, regular meeting of Wilmington City Council. Roll call, please. Mr. Here. Mr. Wells. Here. Mr. Wallace. Here. Mr. Reed. Here. Mr. Stephen Here. Mr. McKay. Here. I would encourage everyone at this time, if you have a cell phone, to put it on silence, and then would ask you all to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight is our second public hearing on uh, Wilmington's 2012 CDBG Small Cities uh, Block Grant Program. Uh, this year, the city's allocation is $47,000. Uh, the state uh, is permitting uh, direct cities to apply for two projects. Uh, they've limited it because of the, uh, the funding cuts in this past year. Uh, cities uh, selected uh, to carry out one demolition project uh, at 142 North Mulberry Street under Spot Slum and Blight. Um, the property uh, is structurally unstable. Uh, earlier this year, uh, the owner of an adjacent property uh, contacted the city, indicated that the um, chimney was falling onto their home. <coughs> the fire department had to be summoned to remove the chimney, and the city feels that it's probably time to try to remove the rest of the property before it collapses. Uh, the second project is uh, installing security cameras at Prairie View and Quaker. Uh, the subsidized apartment complex 
on Prairie Avenue. Uh, Prairie View contacted the city back in January, uh, reported that uh, in the last couple of years they've had problems with burglaries, uh, a couple of robberies, and some drug crimes, and asked if it would be possible uh, to install security cameras at the entrances uh, to the building and also on the upper floors at the elevators. Um, the city uh, worked with the Department of Development. Uh, we determined that it would be an eligible project. Uh, it is uh, a building that is occupied by either elderly or disabled residents of Wilmington. And um, the uh, property manager uh, carried out their due diligence and got two uh, price solicitations. Uh, and we are committing $23,700 to help them install security cameras and some monitoring equipment in the offices of each building. Uh, in addition, uh, the city has committed $2,300 to complete one of the mandatory uh, fair housing programs that go along with the grant and $7,100 for administration of the grant. Uh, this evening we'll be passing the resolution uh, to apply and the applications are due uh, Friday, June the <coughs> 2nd. I have one for comment. Do we have anyone in the audience this evening to comment on any of the CDBG items? If you would wish to comment, we can bring you forward. Any members of the council? of this presentation uh, for your consideration. It's, it's meant as, a, as an overview, if you will, of, of our project and what it is that uh, we're trying to accomplish, which involves the cooperation of the city of Wilmington as well as the, uh, the city schools of Wilmington, uh, predominant uh, parties involved as we move forward with this. If you look at page one, the situation overview is that the, the company, ATSG and the Port Authority, are working together uh, to, to construct a new hangar uh, at the existing uh, air park, or at the, at the Wilmington Air Park next to existing uh, facilities, hang facilities. It would be a 100,000 square foot hangar. We're looking to, uh, proposing the build. Uh, the company, the <coughs> Port Authority would, 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 would build the hangar, own the hangar, and the company would lease the hangar from the Port Authority. Uh, to, to, to fund this project, we've, the Port Authority and the company have, have worked to receive from the state, from the city of Wilmington, from the uh, Wilmington uh, Community Inc Improvement Corporation, as well as Clinton County, significant funds towards this project. And uh, I guess I should take this opportunity to thank the city of Wilmington for its contribution to the Port Authority towards this project. Uh, we estimate that the project, once the hangar is completed, will employ 259 full-time employees, uh, that, that job requirement uh, will be a commitment that the company will have to make to the state of Ohio in order to receive, be able to receive the funding, uh, otherwise be subject out of penalties or some other adverse uh, situation. The, the estimated, the, the jobs, 259 jobs are estimated to generate roughly 14 million annual uh, payroll dollars. Uh, which is worth about 140,000 of uh, income taxes to the city of Wilmington. The cost of this hangar is roughly 14 and a half million dollars. Uh, as I said before, the, the, the company and, and the Port Authority have reached uh, terms on the lease of this new facility as well as uh, amendments of, of terms to the existing uh, lease agreement that we have with the Port Authority. 
all of which would extend our our um, presence at the airbase uh, to a minimum of 23 years, which is what uh, we would be required to, to maintain under the financing package offered by the state. And we have worked with the Ford Authority to coincide our existing lease, which is much shorter than that, uh, to coincide with the termination of this new facility lease. So um, the company looks as, at this as we're uh, providing some significant stability to the air park uh, for, for a very long period of time. Uh, flipping to page two, it's simply a diagram of what the, the new hangar facility footprint would look like. Uh, really in short, what it does is it adds additional capability to the company to be able to market its services to a broader range of customers. Uh, we are able to offer, uh, have, the, have the ability to offer paint, painting capabilities to customers, which we don't currently have today in any significant way, as well as broadening the capabilities uh, of the type of aircraft that we are qualified to maintain, we're able to maintain in our facilities. <coughs> Moving to page three, this is uh, just a summary of the, the, the financial incentives offered by the state of Ohio. Uh, $1.6 million uh, logistics and distribution loan. Uh, that, that loan is can be forgivable if, if certain conditions are met. Uh, there will be a, a, a $9 million bond uh, offered by the state of Ohio, uh, which will have a 23-year life. And as it works out, the company through its lease will have to coincide its lease payments to the Port Authority that allows the Port Authority to pay back that bond. So that's how we get the 23-year commitment in place. There's also a, a, it's called a 166 direct loan. It's a $4 million loan uh, from, the, uh, from the state. And the, the, the method in which that loan is repaid is, is really of what's of interest to the city council as, as well as to the uh, Wilmington City Schools. And we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. But it's called Tax Increment Financing, or TIF. The final bullet on this page uh, is uh, also a requirement by the, the state of Ohio, and that is that the, the company, ATSG, must provide a guarantee to backstop all the financing that's associated with this, uh, with this project. So uh, that, that includes the lease uh, that the, uh, the comp a company affiliate will have with the Port Authority, uh, the amount of TIF service payments, and again, when you think of a TIF service payment, think about an amount of money that you use to pay off debt. So the company has to guarantee a minimum amount of, of money uh, in TIF service payments enough to amortize a piece of the, the debt obligation. Turning to page four, tax increment financing. Uh, what is it? Well, it, it is a, it's a it's a, it's a public financing method used to, to assist or facilitate redevelopment, infrastructure, or other type of community improvement projects. Uh, when a city council <coughs> approves a TIF ordinance, what it does is it exempts a piece of property that is valued to be improved by, by, a, by this project, um, exempts that, that property uh, value from real property taxes, but that money, instead of being applied to the taxes, that same amount of money and the timing of that payment will be used to service debt. So the simplest way you're redirecting the property taxes or a portion of it uh, in the end to, to satisfy a financial obligation in order to um, help help get this, 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 this uh, community improve the project. It's not an uncommon type of a financing vehicle. Um, it's, it's used quite readily in the state of Ohio. As, as a matter of fact, there are over 1,100 TIFs that are utilized today in the state of Ohio. Uh, for your reference, in the Ohio Revised Code, it can be, the, the specifics of this TIF can be found in 5709.401. The type of TIF we'll be asking, we're looking for under this section is a 25-year term and it would, it would implicate 100% of the, the real property uh, tax dollars. Uh, the provision of the code allows for a 10 year up to 75% without having to go forward, go, without receiving approval, but we're going beyond that, so that's why we're here speaking with you tonight, uh, as well as uh, our discussions with the, the school district. Uh, 
page five, please, unless there are any questions on, on the, what Russ, is the TIF? Russ, if I could, I, I did notice um, the length of the lease is 23 years. The amortization of the 166 direct loan is 23 years. Is that a typo on the 25? Or is there a reason that we would extend that two years beyond without the debt service payments? It, it's 25 years intentionally, and it's it's twofold. The first is because the, the timing of your your, your your property revenue tax cycle. By the time this this project is fully up and running, it's going to um, be longer than 20 be longer than 23 years before you get the full impact of, the, of those tax dollars, right? Before that valuation is sufficient enough to be able to generate enough tax increment financing to service the debt. So it's going to take more than 23 years. And there's also a bit of a cushion in there, if you will, to get it to 25. But the amortization schedule ends at 23, <coughs> as I read your presentation. Yes. I mean, does that, that answer your question? Uh, <clears throat> sort of, but we can get into the details okay. later. I just, I noticed that- And if I can defer, uh, you know, we have a, a, our attorney, uh, Scott Zions, who is what I would carefully say is a TIF expert. Uh, if he, he's welcome, if, you're, if you don't have an objection, he can weigh in on any of your questions if I'm not answering them satisfactorily. That would be fine. Is, is there a purpose for that money once the amortization schedule is complete? Uh, uh, Council President uh, Kirchner, uh, Mayor Riley, thanks everybody for having us here. Uh, the answer to the question is, yes, it is a 23 year amortization schedule, but once, it's a 25 year TIF because the TIF goes into effect whenever City Council passes the TIF ordinance. So let's just pick a day, September 1st or August 1st, or September 1st, let's say. The TIF ordinance goes into effect. The first tax year, in which there's going to be a TIF exemption is tax year 2013, which is, a, which is the snapshot date of January 1st, 2013. By that point in time, even if the company starts construction on September 1st and it's hypothetical, the property is only going to be partially completed. So that first year of that 25 year TIF period, the, the, the TIF service payments are going to be like this. They're, they're going to be very small. Okay, TIF service payments are just a dollar for dollar substitute for, for increased property tax payments. So that first year really isn't anything. It's not sufficient to, to, to amortize the debt. Hopefully, by the end, the plan is uh, by January 1, 2014, to have construction be complete. Absolutely. If construction is complete, then we'll have the full value and, and we'll have a full 24 years to service that 23 year amortization. But if something slips, and there's no plans for anything to slip, but it's construction, and, 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 and we all, you know, my recommendation is to be prudent. Uh, we build in that contingency. It effectively works out to a 4% contingency by adding in that extra year. So if all things go well, we're only 24 years, but, uh, but we, we need at least 24. And 24 is what the company's proposing because we think it's a good proposal that slight contingency. Does the, the repayment of the 166 direct loan begin in 2013, January 1, 2013? Uh, uh, no, the, the, uh, the repayment begins. Uh, sorry, it's 2014. Bye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm Sarah Williams. I'm the tax director at ATS. Sarah's from ATS. She, she's their tax director and has been with them for quite some time, as I understand. Five and a half years. Five and a half years. And uh, Russ Smithwick is the uh, development, or the, I'm the director of strategic, director of strategic planning. And Scott Zions is an attorney who I've been told is spooky smart when it comes to tips. So there you go, Scott. How's that? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're preferring not to be spooky, but we, we really just <laughs> very, the long very short smart. Of it, is that do you have a date that it would be? Yeah. The, there's a delay in Ohio real estate. If you ever bought a house in Ohio, you know how there's the line on your closing statement that says this is how much you owe the guy that had the house before. There's always an adjustment for it. So there's a delay between when the construction's finished 
and when the assessed value of the new building starts to actually generate revenue. Okay. There is also a delay on the 166 loan between when we start construction till it, it doesn't start to amortize until after the city gets that first payment of property taxes. It actually goes to the county and then it's forwarded on to the city for you to pay that and pay other people as Russell finishing this, this discussion. So that's the time limit. <coughs> the first part of that tip loan has no interest. And then after that, it's a 1% interest rate. So it's, they give us the money up front, but then if there's a delay while they're waiting for the Ohio real estate property rules, the tax rules to keep it. Okay, and, and that's through the ODOD agreement? Correct. Okay, I, and I'm assuming you get a copy of those agreements. Yes. We, uh, the short answer is yes. We, uh, we're finalizing the, the financing uh, package term sheet with the ODOD as we speak as they are uh, scheduled to uh, obtain final approval from the State Controlling Board uh, June the 11th. So we're getting uh, getting very close to finalizing the terms of that transaction. Obviously the next step is to close it, but in order to close, you need to have requirements to have the, uh, the TIF in place. Now it's, this being my first TIF, and you have to excuse me, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not a TIF spooky smart expert. Scott, the only person in this room that probably has more than more experience with it or had any experience with TIF is Scott. So you're not well, alone. Uh, at least one Scott is right. <laughs> in this conversation. But the, the TIF would be on the building itself. Obviously, it will be sitting on property. The property exists now. But right. my question is, does the TIF not enact until the building is complete? Or does it start on the ground while construction is going on? The TIF never covers the cost of the ground, I don't think. It, well, the, the, it's the, only the incremental value increase. Right. Once you start investing in so improving the land. Right. As you said, the ground is there already. As a, as, a, as a practical matter, you know, there's no revenue until the uh, building is improving. It's a technical matter though. The TIF exemption begins by, with the first tax year. The statute says it begins whenever you enact the ordinance. So I can use September 1, 2012 as, a, as, as a, an example date. Uh, but the, exempt, the, the in that first year, let me start back here. What tax income financing is again is it's whenever city council declares the increase in the assessed value of a certain parcel or parcels of real property to be exempt from tax. So you have, let's just say the value of, of, of Black Acres, $100. That value of $100, it's going to continue to be subject to property tax. That property tax is going to continue to be paid on that $100. Whenever you enact a TIF ordinance, that $100 stays level, but as the value increases over time, that increment, instead of paying property taxes in that increment, property owners pay what's called TIF service payments. And they're paid at the same time and in the same manner as property tax payments. So going back to the question, uh, for tax year 2013, let's say the value of the parcel is $10,000. I don't know what it is. Let's say it's $10,000. By 1-1-13, the value might be a million dollars. Maybe they've done some site work, some construction. That increase in value from $10,000 to $1 million or $990,000, the property owner won't pay what's called TIF service payments on that. Obviously, that TIF service payment on about a $1 million increase is not going to be enough to service that, that debt. But by 1 1 2014, when the whole building is done, hopefully, <coughs> then the incremental increase in value will be about 14 and a half million. That's what's, what, what's projected. That 14 and a half million dollar incremental increase in value will generate to service payments, which will be used to service the debt on the 166 loan after a capitalized interest period. And, and, and again, we're, we're struggling a bit because uh, the terms haven't been finalized with the state. We're working through the details of the term sheet. We wanted to uh, begin this discussion with city council now. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, we're going to be finalizing this term sheet. Okay. I, and one other question, because again, I'm, I'm not a county auditor. 
either, but would it be normal for the county to come out and assess an increased improvement value without a completed construction project? Or would they wait until the building was complete in order to be able to assess the improvement value? Uh, in, in most counties, I mean, there's 88 slightly different answers to that question, but in most counties, uh, whenever a building permit is taken out, uh, someone in the county auditor's office will find out about it. They have some type of methodology to find that out. And then that will trigger someone to go out and find out what was there as of January 1st. So I'm guessing that's what happens in Florida, <coughs> but I'm not certain. Okay, uh, very good. I'm sorry. Derail this in the middle of the presentation. I'm just trying to understand the difference in 23 and 25. It's a complicated matter. And want to work through it so we all understand uh, to make an informed decision. Very good. Okay, uh, page five. Uh, we, we covered most of this uh, <coughs> just a moment ago, but the proposed TIF that, that, that uh, we're asking the city council and the city and one of the city schools to consider is 100% of that incremental value of, 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 of that property that's taxed would be sub subjected to this TIF which means, and it would be for a term of 25 years. Uh, in order for this to happen, again, the city council and, as well as the Wilmington City Schools have to come to an agreement that we will move forward with this. Um, so, the money, the, the incremental value of this, this property, estimated to be $14.5 million, is gonna be sub subjected to this, this, this tax increment financing. And so, ordinarily, uh, you would pay the property tax value or the property taxes on that uh, incremental value would be about two hundred and let's just say seventy thousand dollars. All right, so that's the amount of money that uh, the property taxes that will be now considered TIF service payments. And so of that amount, uh, the first uh, obligation that will have to be met is to satisfy the amortization on the one sixty six loan, which based on our, uh, what we've seen from the state, it's roughly $227,000 a year. So the $270,000 of tax, of, uh, TIF service payments, $227,000 <coughs> comes right out of that. that. That goes towards office, satisfying the loan, okay? Any remaining money after satisfying the $227,000 would then be um, eligible to be paid to the, the Wilmington City Schools as well as the Joint Vocational School, uh, Great Oaks. And the reason for this is, and, and this, this is where I may start to struggle, but uh, you know, based upon the state's uh, funding formula with the schools, if, if there is a, a piece of property that has value, that is, that's, that is factored into the state's funding formula for, for the amount of money schools are eligible for. The reality is the, the, the property taxes associated with this, this new building will not be eligible for the school. So using the formula, they could be potentially uh, left in a, in a position where they receive less funding. And so if there's leftover money from making the debt service payment out of the, out of the, uh, money, out of the TIF service payments that have been withheld, the leftover money can then be paid to the school and the joint vocational school to make them whole, which means that uh, they would be in, 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 a, in a position as though the, the TIF was not in place and yet the building was still built, uh, if that makes sense. If there's a shortfall where there's not enough money left over out of the TIF service payments after paying the, the, the 166 loan debt obligation, and, um, and the schools are not in a, in a, in a not made whole, then if there any remaining obligation to make them whole would be funded through the incremental income taxes uh, paid to the city of Wilmington. Is that, is that clear? We'll go through it. Example. Just out of curiosity, let me understand something you said. The, the estimate of the made whole amount is based on the fact that the school could lose state funding amounts based on the increased value of the property. That's right. What would occur if they did not lose that? I don't know. I don't know if that's 
that's a likely uh, scenario. I mean, based on the funding formula, granted that there's a bridging formula in place, but but based on the way things have historically done, if there is a, if there is value added to, and there's real property taxes available, that impacts the amount of money that they would school that ordinarily be able to afford. Not the way I understand it, that the school the school formula system is not affected by tips. That's a general statement. I don't know the details. That's but correct. It's not affected by a TIF, but the school funding form is affected by the real property value taxes. What happens is... Oh, you're saying there wasn't a TIF that would affect them. The, the end game of this TIF is to put the schools in a position as if there was no TIF, but yet they were receiving the benefit of this new new property in, incremental value. You have a... This is the time for this question. Do you have the, the uh, dollar amount, in other words, 35% of the improvement times uh, 0.052 gives you a certain an estimated tax right. or a service charge, if you will. Do you have an idea what that number is? Yeah. And it is? Well, if, if I can, uh, I'm happy to answer your question. Do you have a spare one of those? I do. I do. I'll pick it up. Um, let me finish going through the presentation. There's a, there's an example on the on the next page, um, which I'll take them through the city council, and um, and hopefully that'll shed some more light on this. Okay, so I left off. Well, there's a shortfall in, in the uh, in, in in the amount of money that is is remaining to make the schools whole, and that makeup payment would come from the city of Wilmington all funded through the incremental income tax that would be generated by these by the by the, by the new payroll all right roughly one hundred forty thousand dollars a year once we're up, up up to full speed would be available to be applied towards any makeup payment and we'll get to what we think that makeup payment is going to be um, but it's also very important to understand that if, if under some unfortunate circumstances where the company or the Port Authority would, would end up in default, go out of business, what have you, that the city or the schools would have no financial recourse liability for any of these, any, any of these obligations, specifically the 166, and that the TIF pledged by the city um, would not obligate, the city would not be obligated to pay anything more than what they had pledged to under the, under the, the TIF ordinance. Um, and the makeup payments, as I said earlier, will, will be limited to the amount of incremental income tax that the city uh, would, would enjoy by the additional payroll. So quite simply, the way, the way I try to, the way I look at this is, in no way, in no situation do we find that the school will be, will be put in, any, in an adverse situation under this scenario with a TIF, and nor will the city of Wilmington. That we are asking some, some so our request is for the for the approval of the TIF in order to allow this program to proceed, but in no way, shape, or form do we ever envision there's a, a situation where the, this would have an adverse effect on the schools or the city of Wilmington. Uh, we look at this as it, 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 there's a, a very um, a very good opportunity for the community and for the corporation uh, by going forward with this. If we flip to page uh, five, it's an illustration of what the proposed TIF, page six, illustration of what the proposed uh, TIF would look like. And so you see you have a $14 million estimated valuation on this new, new, new facility. That would be the incremental amount of property, real property, uh, property <coughs> subject to uh, property taxes. Uh, if I apply the formula, 35% times this, that, the amount of incremental property taxes is $264,000. I'd said $270,000 before, but as an example, as just round numbers, but two sixty-four. dollars Of that amount, $227,000 is required to, to be used to pay, to amortize the 166 loan. So you'd have a remaining amount of $37,500. Well, if if you look at what the uh, of the property taxes that the school, the Joint Vacation School in the City of Wilmington would have been entitled to, based on the uh, the, the tax rates, it would they would be entitled to fifty one thousand dollars of that two hundred and sixty four. Well, there's only thirty seven left. 
after applying the loan payments. So that means there's a $13,700 shortfall. So where does that money come from to make up the shortfall? Well, that would be funded by the city of Wilmington through the incremental income taxes generated by the, the new payroll. $14 million of payroll, 1% income taxes, $140,000 of new, income, new taxes, income tax to revenue of the city. Which, after making that uh, makeup payment to the schools, the city would still be left in a, in a net positive position of $126,000. So again, as we look at it, the school is, in, is, is not disadvantaged in any way, shape, or form in this project. And the city, because we have $14 million in new payroll, even though the, the city is, is, is using part of that to support the schools, they're still in a net positive position. So I conclude on page seven. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and, and, and talk about this matter. We, we, we think it's a great opportunity, not only for the company. Sure, we're, we're a, a for-profit organization. We wouldn't do things unless there was a benefit to the shareholders. But we have lots of opportunities we evaluate that are of, of benefit to our shareholders. What makes this opportunity very exciting for the company is that we have an opportunity to bring a, a significant amount of employment to a community that has, that we've experienced it firsthand since we're the ones that had to terminate the six, seven, eight thousand people. We, we, we find this to be a, a, a particularly sweet opportunity because we have some ability to bring back a, a fairly substantial amount of jobs. Uh, the company is prepared to take the commercial risk on this venture. Yes, we're asking the city and the schools to, to, to work with us on this, but at the end of the day, it, 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 is, it is a commercial enterprise and there are certain risks and rewards. And um, uh, one of the risks with this is that we could, uh, we could lose a lot of money. That's not the plan, it never is, but we bear the commercial risk of having to, to, to hire the employees to generate the revenue and turn that revenue into profit. Uh, that's the risk we're willing to bear. Without the approval of this TIF by the, the city of Wilmington and the, uh, the city schools, this project uh, will not proceed. We, we just simply, the economics that are required to make this project work for the Port Authority and the company uh, require the TIF. If we, if we can't get the TIF passed, I can't uh, get the city of the schools to agree, come to an agreement with us, then we won't have the 259 new jobs. Um, there's again, in the final analysis, we see that the city, even after making the makeup payments to the school, will still come out in a net positive position of well over $100,000 in income taxes. And that's not to speak of the income taxes generated by the, the construction workers that would be working here a full year before the payroll, full payroll is up, up and running, of uh, $14 million. Uh, as well as a multiplier effect to the, to the local economy by having the, the new payroll spent uh, at our local local stores. So, uh, in, in, in conclusion, that the, the company respectfully requests that the city will give consideration to our request and approve uh, the proposed TIF ordinance. Obviously, upon further uh, information and, and discussions about this, but that's what we're seeking. And I, I believe it's, it, it is important for, to note that the time is of the essence with this. Um, it's not a tomorrow decision, but we would like to work expeditiously with the city and the schools, which we've started this with the city schools already, uh, to, to bring, us, uh, bring us to revolution. Right. Sir. I, I pretty much understand the city side of it. Um, but would, would not the property taxes to the county be deferred? Or am I missing something? Would, would the county be shorted uh, the amount of taxes that they would have gotten? Yeah. Is that? Um, the only would player the is the school, school, right? right? Yes. Would, the, would the county be shorted taxes? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. The, 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 uh, the, for, uh, put it that way, uh, but, but, but the, what, 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 the, what the county will, will not get is the is increased taxes. That's it. property taxes. Exactly. Right. Again, whatever, whatever the base value is going to remain the base value, and they'll get those taxes. But as they will not get any of the incremental increase, those all, all go to pay. Okay. Those all go in the form of services. And, and I think council understands this, but, but obviously this is. Uh, <coughs> I would, respectfully submit that it, it's notable that 
they're not asking for a property tax abatement. Uh, I know in a lot of situations, what, what companies are seeking uh, commitments from local authorities, what they ask for is property tax abatement. Now, you know, the county, it might be like a property tax abatement because they don't come with the revenues. But what the, what the company is doing is they're paying the same amount and at the same time. In fact, they're committing to a minimum amount. They're just, it's just that this is going to be used for debt service and that's state level. They would get increased sales taxes. And so <coughs> but Correct. And, and, and hopefully, ancillary. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of have to look at this, you know, this not on the city side or the school side. We want to evaluate the whole picture. Yes, sir. Comment that uh, you made, I just wanted to, to clarify out real quick. Um, based on the value of the, of the project once it's completed, uh, assuming, let's assume that the economy finally turns around and everything starts heading back the other direction, then in 10 years, uh, and the properties be evaluated again, um, uh, at that particular point, that difference, uh, the value could go up at that point, and then that shortfall to the schools uh, may no longer exist at that particular point based on the payments. Am I correct in that assumption? Yes, and that that, that would be the the hope is this project uh, drives more benefit than what we've just put on this paper and that there is real property valuation improvement and, uh, and the city doesn't have to make, contribute to the makeup payments. It, it, it's a uh, To run numbers under different scenarios, but if, if, if the values increase, it's good thing for everybody because the tip could end early. If there's enough there for debt service, that, that was my follow up question. Was if, if, if that's the way it's structured, right now, what we've proposed is that.